Good morning, and welcome to podcast number eight. We will be getting into Song of Songs, chapter one, verse four. Draw me away. Let us run together. The king has brought me in to his banqueting chambers. We will rejoice and be glad in you. We will remember your love more than wine. How right they are to love you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for how right we are to love you, Lord. How right of a choice it is, Lord. I ask God that you would give us vision, Lord, of your love and vision for our life, Lord. That we would truly find the things that matter in this life, Lord. And that's you. As you mark it on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So, here with this verse, it's the longest verse we've, uh, we've, we've gotten to yet. Um, she is, it is her life's cry, her call, her life's vision. She says, draw me after you. Let us run together. And notice how we get the plural, or sorry, the singular, then the plural. She says, draw me after you. So we're to be drawn unto the Lord in intimacy, singularly. And that's, that's her first cry, her first vision. And then, to run together, to let us run together. So, we get this singular and then this plural. Now, I believe the first, uh, the first vision of her life is to be drawn unto the Lord and into the sea. That's our call, the first commandment, to be drawn unto the Lord, to love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But our second vision is like it. It says, let us run together. And run speaks of work. It speaks of doing something. So we are doing something together with the Lord. So we do ministry with people. But we do intimacy alone. So just you and him. And uh, if we're doing it rightly, we do it in that order. Is we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that love for him overflows into the second commandment. So we have the first commandment and the second commandment. And I say, if this is not your life vision, make it. It would be a wise thing for you to do that. As we see later on the verse, they say how right it is. Or the bride says how right it is for them to love you. And uh, the next verse could be interpreted um, as either the bride crying or, or sorry, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. The next verse is, The king brought me into his chambers. And uh, this chamber is a bridal chamber. It is a chamber where nobody else can get in but the bride and the groom, and for them to be alone together. And that same time, the, the king actually answers her prayer there that she crawl, cries out. She says, Draw me away with you. Draw me away with you. It's, it's interesting. We see the prayer here. And then he answers it. So he carries her in to the chamber. The same way that he carries the sheep over his shoulders in Luke. Um, we see that he answers prayer. And he's actually more eager to answer the prayers of intimacy than we are to ask it. He is so ravished. He is so overwhelmed with love. For his bride and so moved by her her heart but the chamber experiences they they talk of um, certain moments they speak of certain moments in our life uh, where we were marked by the Lord in, in, in that deep secret place where he promised us things where we got something from him where he corrected us where he directed us where he spoke to us in a divine way and then after we have those moments, 
we see the next verse that says, We will be glad and rejoice in you. So we rejoice in those. And then it says, We will remember your love more than wine. So as we are going, because of wine, they speak of, uh, of earthly pleasures, things, uh, joyous, you know, wine speaks of joyous celebration, um, uh, or the joys of this world. So in the midst of while we live out in this world, we're called to actually remember the more pleasurable loves, to remember his promises. When we are living in this day to day, we're called to remember our first love and to remember those moments where he spoke to us, where he promised us things. We're called to remember, to go back to those moments and to remember his love more than wine, more than than any other pleasure, or to remember the superior pleasures of love. And the only reason why we sin ever is because we believe that the pleasures of this world are actually more pleasurable than the superior pleasures of his love. And that's the only reason we ever sin, is we, we actually believe that, that that pleasure, that temporary pleasure, is actually more powerful or more enjoyable than the pleasure we can get from from him. So, I encourage you that it never is. It always leaves you high and dry. And then uh, it goes on to say how right they are to love you. So, we see, we see here, we say, we will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than one. So again, we get this singular, then plural. The answering of the prayer of singular, the king brought me into his chambers. He drew me away with him. And now these are the daughters of Jerusalem speaking, saying, we will rejoice. We're doing ministry together. We're doing the second commandment, the first commandment, the second commandment. It starts off with prayer, and then it, it will live out. So, so we see... Uh, uh, the daughters of Jerusalem, again, I, I'll explain this. Uh, we have uh, three uh, main characters. We have the King Solomon, who's in the natural, who is, um, we have King Solomon, the Shulamite woman, and the daughters of Jerusalem. Now, King Solomon is a picture of Jesus. The bride, or the Shulamite woman, is a picture of the bride of Christ or the individual believer, and the daughters of Jerusalem uh, are sincere believers, but immature in their faith, um, not fully fervent or mature as the bride. Um, and the natural uh, translation, or the natural uh, interpretation, it would, uh, they would just be like the bridesmaids, um, but they are, uh, are so intrigued, so uh, provoked um, by the bride's love, and so curious, saying, "How do you love this man so much?" And uh, they they are encouraged by her love and spurred on. Um, at the end of all this, she says, "How right they are to love you! How good it is to love and to remember his love more than any wine." And I tell you, there is no more. There is not a wiser choice to make this vision, this vision in your life, a reality. To, to set the first commandment in first place, and the second and second, and nothing would come before those two. So I hope you guys are blessed with this, um, Lord Jesus. I just pray, God, that you would breathe vision, Lord. You say, without the vision, the people perish, Lord. So I pray this life vision of the first and second commandment in people's lives that they would. No matter what their vocation is, no matter what their assignment is, Lord Jesus God, that uh, that they would do it through the lens of your love of the first commandment, and to love God, to love people, to know God, to make you known, Lord Jesus. I just thank you for it. I ask you to write it on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Alright guys, I will catch you next podcast. Love you. Bye.